What's up, everybody? Jason here for jazbeescasebreaks.com. 2022 Panini Mosaic Football just sold out. This is a six box half case break. Pick scenes number 10. All card chip. And here we go. Chris Butler got the Falcons last ball mojo. And uh, the Texans. Caden. I wish I knew, man. We don't really have a scheduled break. And I can't even tell you an estimated time. Because uh, some breaks sometimes can fill in a matter of minutes. Sometimes it takes hours. And we hate to say that, but sometimes it might take a day or two. So, um, I think it's like in the l low 20s now. I can't really tell you when that could break. But nothing breaks until it's sold out, so... That's a new break we posted yesterday. You know, obviously, if, if they stuck for a little bit, then once that one fills, we probably don't do another one. But, yeah. Uh, there's no estimated time for any breaks. Once they sell, they break. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, no, it's it, we're a little different. I mean, some people have scheduled breaks, some people don't. We're kind of more like the traditional, like you know, once it sells, it breaks. Sometimes we probably put a filler next to the break if it's taking a little too long, you know, or it's a little too expensive sometimes. But I just think there's so much on the website that it kind of gets lost in the shuffle. But um, I think hopefully once we do one, people see it and they want to rip more, and we can do another. But you know, football section's pretty loaded, so. I think that's what kind of got it a little slow. But it's only a $25 break, guys. Pretty strong. All right, Swagger, Taylor. Brandon Ayuk, Giuseppe, and Derrick Henry. You got a purple James Washington to 49. Birdie, Danny Gray, and a Jamar Chase montage to Blue to Silver and first auto is James Robinson for the Jags, Jacksonville Jaguars. David, nice little Darius Slay. It's Slay to ninety nine. And how about a little Ricky Williams? Autograph there for the Dolphins to 49. Matt Corral and Herbie Stars. Or Stairmaster. All right, next one.
It's like. It's like. It's like, damn, bro, if you don't like Darius, why the hell tell your parents why they name you Darius? Or officially drop the Darius. <laughs> Just be correcting everybody. It's Slay. I mean, I like the last name Slay. I think it's cool, but you hate Darius so much. Drop the Darius from your name. I know, Fletch was funny though with that. Lakers take the lead over Miami. Alright, we got Travis Etienne. Fred Taylor. Cooper Cup to 49 purple, Stairmasters. Kenneth Walker. And Vilas Jones Jr. for the Bears, Zachary. And wow, look at that. Nice Mac Jones. That's out of 15. Who has the Pats? Rondas. And a Willie Rofe. Saints. That is the Saints. Raphael. There you go, man. Oh yeah, what's it called? Tess tessellation? Tessellation. Tessellation. So what's up, Aaron? Do my eagles in our uh, in your lines do it this weekend or what? Drake Lennon introductions. And you have to admit, though, right? Like, they, they played a lot better than you ever expected, right? Without a doubt. Then didn't, didn't you predict them to only win like three games this year, three to four? But yeah, the the Lions is kind of a little bit more tougher. They need to win, but then hope that the Seattle Seahawks lose. The only one that has the easiest path is the Packers. If they win, they're in. So Seattle. And then Seattle's in the same boat. They need a win, and they need to hope that you guys beat the Packers. But I'm happy with your Lions, man. Like I said, I'm not even a Lions fan, but I just think they're a talented team. It was, they were fun to watch this year. And uh, looking back at it, man, that Eagles-Lions week one was just kind of like a glimpse of what they can be. All right? A little shaky to start the season after that. You know, won a game and then lost a couple games really close, but... You know, like I said, pretty much the only the Dallas game and and uh, and the Patriots game is the only one they really got like kind of blown out early in the season with. After that, that was it. You know what I mean? Like they lost a lot of games, but they were really, really close games. I think Dallas ended up being like what twenty four six, and then the Patriots game was like a blowout, like shutout. But other than that, it was like really close games. But. That team is going to be fun to watch. Who 
them and the Jacksonville Jaguars are in the same kind of boat. Both teams again. Going from like worst to potentially, you know, being a playoff team. And then Jaguars have an opportunity to be first place in their division too. Pick it. You know what's crazy about San Francisco that I just learned today? And I and I and this is coming from I think the 49ers are definitely one of the most scariest teams because their defense is amazing. Um, you know, their 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 offense isn't built around a quarterback. Around the around their playmakers, so as long as the quarterback can deliver the ball and just not limit mistakes and not make any mistakes, they can win. So I'm not trying to say anything bad against the 49ers, but I just found this out today that they've only beat like two teams with a winning record this year. Can you believe that? And it's unfortunate that their division is obviously really bad in that sense that they're all either under 500 or at 500. But I think they've only beat like two or three teams, if that. With a winning record. Amon St. Brown to 99. And Michael Vick, center stage. And again, let me see. I'm going to pull that up right now. Let's see if we can go through it together. So again, week one, Chicago, right? They actually lost that game, but that was a loss. But they're not the team with a losing record. Seattle, I think, is what eight and eight right now, or something like that. They're trying to become a uh, on the winning side, but they're like a break even. They won that game, right? They lost to the Denver Broncos, which that one was a very just ugly game in general. But that was a team of uh, under five hundred, right? Rams, they beat. Under 500. Panthers, they beat under 500. Falcons, they lost to. That team was under 500. Now, the team that they beat, that they lost to against the Chiefs, obviously they're over 500. They beat the Rams again, under 500. Chargers is, I think, the second team that was over that they beat, right? Or no? Seattle, and then yeah, the Chargers, right? They won that one. Chargers are like 10 wins. Arizona, one, under 500. New Orleans Saints, under 500. The Dolphins have just died right now, right? They're now, I guess, they're under 500 or they're at 500, barely. Bucks, even though they have the winning record, I think they're barely at 500. Seahawks, again, they beat them. Washington, I think break even. And then I think at 500, if anything, or under 500 now. And then the Vegas Raiders are under 500, and they beat them in overtime. Then they play the Arizona uh, Cardinals this week, who are under 500. But it's just so funny that, like, you know, Eagles got so much uh, criticism for beating some of these teams early on in the season that were basing off of last year's record, Jalen Tolbert. And then now you look at those teams, and now they're actually playoff teams slash about to be a playoff team. You know? <laughs> and I just think it was so funny. And I barely learned that today. Patty Mahomes purple. 49 and 49. And Devontae Wyatt. Packers. It's going to Simon. But yeah, man, Raiders look good with Stidham, didn't they? So is, was it was it really was it Derek Carr then, or, or what's going on there? 
That last interception of the game, it wasn't really his fault. I think he got hit while he threw it, didn't he? Which is like a little wobbly up, up, uh, up in the air pass. For sure, right? I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, maybe they didn't say it out loud in the locker room and into the media, but it's valid to have a couple players, or maybe more than a couple players, uh, upset. You know, feel a certain way about Derek Carr the way he played this season. You know, and then Derek Carr also, you know, getting a, a couple, a couple emotional interviews. You know, in those couple losses in the row where. Where, you know, he was kind of like, I want it so bad, but yet, you know, or, you know, I, I know so many people that work so hard and yet it doesn't translate to win. So, you know, maybe they didn't say it out loud, but maybe a couple of people were like, yeah, hell yeah. I'm happy that Derek Carr's not playing. He should be benched. You know, he's playing horrible. And, yeah, you're right, right? Maybe they wanted to play for Stidham. I mean, Stidham... Kind of like all those other Patriot quarterbacks like Garoppolo and those guys where they drafted him and potentially could be the next guy up behind Tom Brady, but it just never worked out. Pick it. Center stage. Whoa. We have a Britton Brown. I know a lot of people pulled out some of the stones over the weekend. But rightfully so. It's exactly why you hold on to some of these guys. Tom Brady. Malik. Jake Ferguson. Nicole Harmon, Kansas City Chiefs. Sugar. Yeah, it's been a couple frustrating weeks. You know, I don't. I wasn't upset about. I wasn't as upset about the Eagles losing to the Cowboys because I kind of figured that probably would happen without Jalen Hurts. I wasn't as confident. And they played a lot better than I thought they would. And at the end of the day, they still had an opportunity to win that game. Although I don't think Gardner Minshew looked as good as I thought he could have. He still made some throws, made some plays. And like I said, they had a chance. But this weekend was a little bit more frustrating to watch. Because Gardner Minshew looked really off. And he's, he's throwing a lot from his back foot. And yes, I, I think that's a perfect way to say it. He looks scared. He's like... It's like he's hesitant. Like, he's afraid to, you know, throw up a pass and get it picked off, you know? Like, he's just trying to play as conservative as possible. But, yes, the Saints game was a lot more frustrating because I think they should have won that game. But the offense couldn't do squat, you know? Defense did their job. Although, you know, they ended up scoring 20 points. Pick six obviously doesn't count towards the defense. You know, they held them to 13 points, basically, and... Sacked them, I don't even know how many times, you know, so it was more on the offensive side. So, yeah, that one was a little bit more frustrating. 
But that just, you know, goes to show you, obviously, it's good to have a decent backup, but at the end of the day, you can't always expect to win with the backup. Obviously, the Eagles know how it is to win with a backup, but, you know, it ain't going to happen again, right? I mean, that, at least that's the way it looks like. If, if, if Jalen Hurts was going to miss the playoffs, I don't know if I'm as confident as I was with, like, Nick Foles, you know? So, um, they should get back on track this weekend. Nice Cooper Cup there. As long as I think Jalen Hurts plays. <clears throat> I mean, now it's kind of proving why he is your your potential, like, at least MVP top candidate, you know? It's not just the system sometimes. Miles Sanders. Derrick Henry. But, uh... It's going to be interesting, though, obviously, because I don't know if I don't know if the Giants are going to really play all their starters. I mean, you, you don't want them to take a week off because, I mean, no matter what, they're going to play in a wild card game, so you kind of want to keep them fresh. But at the same time, you know, I don't, I don't see why you would want to risk injury. I don't think it's that serious. I just think that Eagles have had time. The Eagles knew that if they beat Dallas or beat the Saints, he didn't have to play. I guarantee you, though, Aaron, if this was a play- if if his injury happened against the Bears and the Eagles played in the playoffs the next week, he would have got a bunch of painkiller shots, and he would have played. But the fact is that why would you do that when they were confident enough to win against the Cowboys and even confident enough to win against the Saints? Now I don't think they're as confident. So now he's probably going to have to play. But you know, if they would have won one of those two games. Well, or Hurts could have had a whole month off, you know, and that that was the plan. But now, obviously, it's a little different story, right? Now it's kind of like they have to win, and he might be forced to come come in a, a week earlier potentially. I mean, the good thing is that as long as he stays healthy, they win. Then, if his shoulder is really sore, you know, the next week, well, they'll have an extra week for a bye week, so even better. But. I think, I think personally he's good, but I just think the Eagles don't want to risk anything. Because, yeah, you could aggravate that, but if he gets pounded on by, like, a 300-pound lineman and then re-aggravates his shoulder sprain, then you start getting into, like, some serious things where ligament damage happens and all that. His injury was only one to two weeks sideline is what it was. I guess the MRIs just showed that it was just a shoulder sprain and it was sore. So, he should be back this week, back to normal, but... Again, like I said, I just think it's kind of hard, right? You want him healthy for the playoffs. But you kind of want to win first place and lock up the number one seed. Lewis Sign. Kenny Pickett. Yeah, I assume if he does play, he's going to be very cautious and he's not going to... He'll still run the ball, but he's not going to put himself in a position to get hit really hard. If he runs the ball, he's going to run it, gain some yards, and probably slide us a lot in this next game if he gets the opportunity to play. I don't see him being that risky. And it, and Jalen Hurts is, throughout the year has shown that he doesn't have to run to make plays. I mean, I think the Titans game was a good one or one of those games where he didn't even run at all. He just threw the ball. Just look at a zillion times. Deshaun Watson. And a Kyler Gordon. Whoop, stuck there. Chicago Bears. Big London. But yeah, Oliver, sorry about that. You, yeah, you've been getting a lot of good Cooper Cup inserts. Nice colors, too. Wow, are the Lakers going to beat the Heat right now? They're up by four. 20 seconds left. Without LeBron and Anthony Davis? For sure. 
I think Jalen Hurts, as the game progresses, understands what kind of game it's going to be. Or if he's going to need to run, he's going to do it. I think the Lions week one was one of those games where he needed to run for his life. Because looking back at it, when I was looking at like highlights like the week after and weeks after just to see it. So I like to just watch highlights a lot. Aiden Hutchinson and that D-line for your guys' this week one was going getting all, getting to Jalen Hurts so much that he needed to run. But that's that that's the beauty of having a, a quarterback that can run though, right? Derek Stanley. Len Dawson. To ninety nine. Swagger. Portland's son. And a nice Josh Allen, men of mastery. It's a ninety nine. on the coaching staff. I'm with you, Decons. Let's do it. Got the Hip Parade football done. Might as well get the Hip Parade exclusive done tonight, too. And we only have, like, two or three cases that left. I think it goes up to 10. Oh. I think they're both great. I mean, I don't know. I haven't... I mean, Hutchinson had a really cool interception the other day. Um, that uh, prevent... <laughs> when he was hiding in the corner. Um, but I think early on, I think Hutchinson had a much better start to his career. But I want to say Thibodeau, as of lately, has really picked it up. I don't. I would have to compare their stats, honestly. Um, I just feel like Thibodeau over the last like three, four games, he has had the sacks, had the fumble recover for a touchdown, you know, shit like that. And then like for Aiden Hutchinson, obviously this past week he had a pretty good uh, interception too, I'm, like a little disguise. I will double check right now, Steve, once I'm done with this. I gotta go check. I didn't actually go check because we had the cases. We had the second half here, but if we do have more, I will post more. Our last box here, guys. But yeah, it looks like right now Aiden Hutchin has seven and a half sacks, 31 solo tackles. Which is pretty good. Seven and a half sacks, you know, rookie year is pretty awesome. And, you know, he probably has... He has an interception. He had an interception uh, against the Giants. Actually, he has like two interceptions. Three interceptions, actually. It's pretty good. And then... Kavion, Like I said, his stats look a lot less. So I would probably have to take Aiden. But he has four sacks. 
But I think recently he's been getting most of his sacks. Like he had one against the Colts. He had one against Washington two weeks ago. And then Washington again a week after that. But he did get the QB hits with the fumble recovery for the touchdown too. But I think Aiden's had a better season though. Alante Taylor. Center stage. Arch Manning. Lakers won, huh? Roger McCreary. And a Miles Garrett. Number to 15. Tessellation. With a nice little Derek Stingley Jr. red. That's a Houston Texans Chris Butler. Last spot mojo. Number two overall pick, I believe. And Malik Willis blue chip silver. Alrighty, guys. Well... Here was like the main hits right here. The Tessellation there, Derek Stingley, Recreary, Gordon, Sign, Miko Harmon out of 25, Cooper Cup, Britton Brown, Ricky Williams to 49, James Robinson, Velas Jones. Tessellation right there of uh, Mac Jones, Willie Rofe, little Kenny Pickett Red, Jalen Tolbert, and Devontae Wyatt. So I feel like the first half might have had a lot of the bigger hits, but still some solid stuff here. Now again, guys, I'm going to go double check if I have more, and if I do... I will post up more. Uh, it'll be number 11, and 12 will be for the same case. So uh, we can uh, you know, run this back tomorrow or this weekend. But appreciate it, guys. Like I said, this is break number 10, jazbeescasebreaks.com.